Hello and welcome to the home of the Gaia style and we're back for the next episode in our Vampire Counts faction focus for Warham the Old World, this time looking at the heroes that were in the 8th edition army book and seeing what they were like, what abilities they had to give us an idea of how they might play in Warham of the Old World, at least in their index slash legendary rules that they're going to get. So first up we have the Necromancer. So we saw the Master Necromancer in the previous one, as you'd expect. Very, very similar, except this time he's a level 1 or 2 wizard instead of a level 3 or 4. He can only be mounted on a Nightmare um, or a Corpse Cart this time, uh, and uh, same special rules. He's basically your cheap support caster, seen in most armies in blocks of Skeleton Warriors or Zombies, and at 65 points, sometimes two level ones would be a good option. Or if not taking um, a Master Necromancer, that you could go with two level twos, uh, which would be the same points cost as a Master Necromancer. You could have two level twos, or you could have one level four, and that was the same points cost. Uh, so always worth taking at least one uh, of these uh, uh, low level casters. Uh, vampire counts armies definitely need magic support. And as you can see on the right hand side there, there's some classic. Uh, miniatures, old school miniatures of the necromancers, one on a horse and one on foot if you are looking to pick these up um, from third party websites. Next up from the heroes category is the basic vampire. So um, we saw the vampire lord. This is a basic vampire, and you know similar flavor again as we saw before. You, you know you got a good stat line. You're low on the wounds. You've got lots of equipment options, uh, mount options, uh, pretty much the same uh, with the omission of the abyssal uh, and the uh, zombie dragon. Uh, also uh, a magic level one wizard so you do get a level one with the vampire uh, but you can only go up to level two this time uh, but using the same laws now the other option you do get here you can make your vampire a battle standard bearer which is an interesting consideration uh, the one benefit of the battle standard bearer um which is in addition to the normal rules that you have, um, which is for undead within 12 inches, they suffer one less wound than they normally would due to the unstable rule or when the general dies. So thinking about a battle standard bearer is always uh, an important option. And you'd expect, you know, maybe something similar in, in um, Warhammer the Old World. You know, I still think... Uh, undead whether it be tomb kings or vampire counts are probably going to have some sort of unstable rule where they crumble instead of flee um uh, and therefore they're going to have means to mitigate that to some degree you can see the battle standard bearer being uh, something like that it would happen uh in my personal list uh, i rarely um, took these uh, mainly because I prefer taking a single vampire lord uh, with necromancer support. Uh, some players uh, do go for the master necromancer um, supported by vampire heroes um, and there's also the option of going with just low magic and just going only vampire heroes going with a minimum core uh, and then just focusing on like an elite army of like blood knights, grave guard and that sort of thing. Though in 8th edition I would say that's probably not the most effective army against a competitive list with the big blocks um, of of infantry that we saw, um, and and you know when you think about why would you take um, a necromancer over a vampire? Yeah, you know, they both can cast. The vampire's got better stats. Well, the necromancer is significantly cheaper, and it also you can upgrade your necromancer to master of the dead. Uh, which allows you to re-roll your invocation of Nehek when you're resurrecting models, which can be really, really important. And that's a lot of the magic support you need. In terms of vampire models, now back in Warhammer 8th edition, it was really, really limited. You didn't have much choice. It was like a winged vampire thing that was fine cast. We saw the other one earlier, which was the, the lady uh, vampire on foot. Um, uh, but there weren't a lot of options. A lot of it was special characters. Well, nowadays, you've actually got a really good option and actually a cheap one at that, which is the Crimson Court, um, which is from Warhammer Underworlds. And it comes with these four vampires. Uh, they all, in my mind, look pretty cool with slightly different flavors, depending on what you're going for, whether it's a sort of a Manfredi style army. That's your sort of Von Karstein slash Blood Dragon style. Maybe that's a Lamian. Maybe that's more Von Karstein and that's Blood Dragon and Strigoi-ish at uh, the back there. But either way, you've got a nice 
so they have different flavors different aesthetics uh, so there are lots of vampire models to choose from now all you will need to do is to rebase them uh, and that shouldn't be too difficult so if you are looking for vampires you've got a lot more choice now than you did before uh, and i'd certainly recommend as a cheap way of picking up multiple vampires you know who's to say that couldn't be a vampire lord on foot this is a really good option Next up, we have the White King. Good toughness, wounds, attacks, and leadership. Lower weapon skill and initiative, however. Um, plenty of uh, equipment options similar to a vampire. However, he does come with heavy armor in his profile rather than a paid option. And he can be mounted on a skeletal steed that may also have barding. And he also can be a battle standard bearer like the vampire. Uh, special rules wise he gets the basic undead one but also gets killing blow which is always nice overall i actually prefer the white king as my melee hero over a vampire he's 20 points cheaper he includes the heavy armor and overall he's one of the coolest looking miniatures and again this was another plastic miniature you see at the top here uh, a plastic miniature on foot say so coming in at the end of that uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle period where you had these um, small plastic miniatures that were multi-part that gave them real depth, 3D depth, which was really nice. Stat-wise, against a vampire, you get less weapon skill attacks and strength, but you do gain the durability with the increased toughness wounds, and you get an additional two leadership, which can be really important when it comes to um, those combat results. Killing Blow is always a good special rule as well. Also, given the need for many characters, Characters in a vampire counts army saving even 20 points can be useful uh, uh also you know there's, there's more options now as well you've got the new mounted white king in age of sigma you can see him down the bottom there he looks awesome you know one thing i have to say is whatever you think about age of sigma whatever you think about the models and it is a personal opinion i do really think a lot of the vampire counts age of sigma models which are updates of old models so they do essentially you can swap and replace them uh, do look really good they've done some really good job with a lot of it um, so that looks really awesome and it could be interesting now you know i never used to field a white king you can see the old white king here on skeletal steed i never used to use that um, in eighth edition uh, cavalry just wasn't the thing it just wasn't that great uh, in the meta um, so it'd be really interesting if that's changed up where cavalry is more impactful um, in Warhammer the Old World that a White King on a skeletal steed in a unit of Black Knights might be an interesting pick. Next up, you've got the good old Cairn Wraith. Good movement and attacks, pretty low everything else in reality for a hero. Um, Equipment-wise, he comes with a great weapon, uh, which is nice for the strength, not nice for the always strikes last. Does come with terror and ethereal, uh, and he also gets a special rule, which is chill grasp, where he can swap all of his attacks for a single attack that if it hits, it will automatically wound with no armor save. Not bad against high toughness stuff, but it is only a single wound. Um, to be honest, I never saw Cairn Race on the tabletop as a hero, um, though in the rare section you can take a unit of them, which was more likely. Uh, the Lords and Heroes category is already so tight with so many choices, so many reasonably good choices as well, that if you want to take Cairn Race, taking a unit was definitely a better option. Uh, when you, know, you think when five points more, I could have a Necromancer, uh, which was just generally more beneficial to my army so that's why i didn't see the cairn race but again plastic miniature here um you can see now pretty much the beginning of the whole um theming of the age of sigma night horn faction the other one you've got here is the tomb bench again another plastic miniature you can see the night haunt um actually you know th this is this is well before night haunt but you can see the influences here again multi-part plastic miniature all of that same ilk as the the white king and, and stuff that we've seen good movement low everything else equipment's a hand weapon only so she's not great in combat she just cause terror and is ethereal as well um uh, uh, but her main special rule is this ghostly howl. It's an eight-inch shooting attack that can also be used. She can march, charge, or be in combat and still use it. It's 2d6 plus 2, uh, and for each point you score higher than the enemy leadership, it causes one wound with no armor saves. 
which, yeah, okay, if you're against Skaven, Skaven slaves, goblins, something with low leadership, that can be quite nice and do a reasonable amount of damage. But anything with higher leadership, you know, elves and stuff is going to be quite tricky. To be honest, I never saw them on the tabletop during their eighth, certainly in a competitive list. It's got a worse stat line than even a Cairn Wraith. It's 10 points more than a White King. Um, there is no situation where I can envisage where a White King or a Vampire wouldn't be better. And in my mind, Ghostly Howl just does not make up for the lack of consistent combat output and the much higher leadership that would be given to your unit of skeletons or zombies from a White King or a Vampire. Now, that does bring us to the end of the Vampire Count's Heroes. However, um, there are two mounts that could be taken um, uh, on the Lords as well, which, which are not covered as single entries later on, uh, and they are quite important from their rules. So I did want to add these in, and here we have, we've got the Vampire Count's Mount Zombie Dragon, which is for the Vampire Lord. You can't take this individually. It can only be taken as a mount for a Vampire Lord. It's got pretty good toughness, strength, wounds, and attacks, as you'd expect from a big monster. Low weapon skill initiative, again, what you'd expect. Um, it's got the usual undead rule, uh, but the general is generally riding it, so that's not a problem. Uh, it does fly, which is why I like to take it for my Vampire Lord. That mobility is great. Large target, doesn't get cover, but it does get scaly skin 5+, plus. does cause terror pestilential breath you know it's not bad it's a breath weapon it's strength too but the minus three armor save is really nice can be quite good against heavily armored targets if you can roll good enough on the strength and swarm of flies is also quite nice minus one to hit in base contact so really does help out you charge the dragon in uh, helps to reduce that damage coming back to uh, your vampire lord say my personal favorite for vampire lord uh, and it's that mobility and the extra damage that you need to win those combats and break units and you can see a picture of it here and is still available uh, today uh, nice uh, nice looking miniature for a zombie dragon certainly much better than the old metal zombie dragon kit i used to have a nightmare with those wings let me tell you metal wings being glued uh, the other mount I wanted to cover, which isn't a single entry, and I think this mount looks absolutely stunning, um, is the Coven Throne. It's got good movement, strength, toughness, attacks, and wounds. Um, uh, equipment is a hand weapon. It is a chariot uh, with an uh, armor save of 5+. plus. It comes with a crew of two pallid handmaidens. And it's drawn by a spirit horde. Special rules-wise, unbreakable and vampiric, as you'd expect. Always strikes first for the handmaidens, which is great. Uh, large target, well, wow, that's yeah, obvious. Uh, spectral steeds, however, means it's ethereal for the um, purposes of movement only. It does have a four plus ward save, that's very nice as well. Uh, you get a special rule of battle of wills, which basically means that when an enemy rolls to hit, you roll, he rolls a d6 plus his leadership. The Coven Throne then also rolls d6 plus the leadership. If the Coven Throne is 1 to 2 higher, the enemy minuses 1 weapon skill and ballistic skill. If the Coven Throne is 3 to 5 points higher, uh, the enemy re-rolls their successful hits. And if the Coven Throne is 6 points higher, every model in the attacking unit makes close combat attacks against their own unit. War Machines take one strength, three hit per crewman uh, against crew toughness. Now, the chances of this happening is reasonably low to get that six plus. But if it comes off, it's awesome. Uh, random attacks from the Spirit Horde underneath. They get 2d6 attacks from the Spirit Horde. Not high strength, but you know, 2d6 attacks could uh, could uh, you know roll hot and uh, cause quite a lot of attacks. And you also get the Scrying Pool, um, which is a bound spell. It's level three, and you, if it's successful, you get to re-roll failed hit or wound rolls this turn. So overall, I prefer the mobility. Uh, with the fly of the zombie dragon uh, the coven throne can still be a good mount however it's a nasty opponent opponent for an enemy it's got quite a high number of attacks you get impact hits on the charge you get a four plus ward save um you know and you know not only that it looks awesome you know on a uh, you know and there's uh, loads of detail in this model um if you go and look where the um vampire lord is sitting there's a cushion there with entrails spilling out of it the de detail on this model is really good i really like it um a very very flavorful 
um, model and looks great as a, as a centerpiece. And there you go. That brings us to the end of the heroes category from our Warhammer Fantasy 8th edition army book for the vampire cats we've covered the heroes we've covered the two mounts which don't come as single entries which are for um the vampire lord uh, i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope it was informative i hope it gave you a refresh if you're coming from playing them in the past if you'd like the video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down but let me know why in the comments down below and as always please hit that subscribe button free for you to do so important for me so thank you for that in advance You've been watching The Ghost Owl. Tune back in for the Vampire Counts core units.